A plane is down in the St. Johns River near Naval Air Station, Jacksonville. These are new pictures. All just patients were treated and evaluated for non-life-threatening injuries. This pilot probably had very little time to be aware of the fact that the thunderstorm was there. Again, I want to emphasize. Incredibly, no one was killed. In fact, there are no reports of any life-threatening injuries. We are capable of bringing resources to the scene unlike any other fire rescue department anywhere in the nation. Well, here is a live picture of why people are saying it is a miracle on the St. John's River. That airplane right there last night in a terrible thunderstorm skidded off the ramp or I should say the runway at NAS Jax. All 143 people on board, including the crew, all the passengers are OK right now. And that plane just needs to have a thorough investigation, which is mm -hmm. going to begin just as soon as the NTSB crew arrives in Jacksonville. Or we may know that they're already here. We're waiting for official word one way or the other there. But uh, we want to welcome you back to our coverage and we'll explain to you that um, we have crews all over covering this right now. We sure do. Our crews have been working throughout the night, updating you both on air and on our First Coast News app, as well as all of our social media platforms. And so let's bring you up to speed with the very latest as we are now in the 10 o'clock hour. So this was a Boeing 737 Miami Air International charter flight chartered by the Department of Defense that left Guantanamo Bay, Cuba yesterday and flew to NAS Jax. We know 143 people were on board. That includes a seven member crew. Now, 21 people initially were transported to the hospital. And the good news today is that they were all minor injuries. And as far as we understand, everyone has now been released from the hospital, the local hospitals. A lot of people also asking about the fuel. Uh, the jet fuel that was on that airliner has now, we understand, we've confirmed, has been contained. Uh, so that is the good news. And then a lot of people, a lot of you were calling our newsroom, sending us messages, asking about the pets because there were some cats and dogs on this plane uh, and it is our understanding that right now uh, they are still believed to be in the cargo hold section of that plane in AS Jack saying earlier this morning that uh, they just were not able to get to those animals unfortunately due to safety concerns. Let's go now live to Lou Turner. You're seeing his live picture right there from the boat where he is on the St. John's River and Lou it's really helpful to have you there close much much closer than most people to kind of explain the lay of the water the lay of the land under the water and where that plane is resting. I tell you what, let's do something else and we'll come right back to Lou. I think he's just readjusting his microphone right now, but he's always had some really good information for us. You know what's very interesting is hearing from the pilot and from a passenger on mm -hmm. board. We have new sound coming in and we're going to show you that here in just one second. Yeah, and we want to send it out now to NAS Jacks. That's where our Troy Kless is standing by. And Troy, I know that uh, on this plane, it was a mix of civilians and military members. Not everybody was planning on getting off the plane here in Jacksonville. Some of them uh, were headed to other destinations. Uh, one couple headed to California. So for the people who were left here in Jacksonville stranded, I know the Red Cross You've been talking to them and they're really coming to the assistance to help all those people impacted. Exactly, Heather. They came ready to serve over those hundreds of people that were on that plane, that 143 people that were on the plane, the passengers and the crew as well. So they are here. There are volunteers currently on the base, again, ready to help out when needed. A bulk of them did get a chance to go home and rest after working through the night to help all of those people with whatever needs that they requested, whether again it was food or, you know, a place to sleep, a rest after all of this ordeal unfolded. So again, the Red Cross did tell me that they're working to get a number on exactly how many people and who again they are trying to serve and help in what capacity. Again, we did hear a little bit from them earlier this morning. We're always prepared, so we have um, volunteers on standby um, all of the time, so they're on call 24 hours a day. Um, normally, we would be responding to a house fire or something smaller, um, but we're always ready to gear up for, for situations like this. 
Again, all those volunteers out here helping in whatever capacity they can. Another organization that I just got done talking to, I mentioned the Navy Marine Corps Relief Society, which is um, a group that helps out all active duty and retired military and family personnel. So she told me that they are going to help in the financial aspect if any of the people on board um, again, need any help with whether it's medical bills or anything like that, that the Family Fleet Readiness Center here on the base, that's the channel they can go to in order to get that sort of assistance. And hopefully we'll hear a little bit more from her later today on Good Morning Jacksonville. But for now, live at NES Jax, Troy Kless, First Coast News on your side. All right, Troy, thanks, thanks so much. And you know, this happened in the pitch darkness last night. It was just uh, before 10 o'clock last night when this plane skidded off the runway into the St. John's River. And we heard from the cockpit, the pilot, tell air traffic controllers that there was weather in the area. So let's go over now to First Coast News storm expert Steve Fondero, who's been looking at the weather conditions and the storm that popped up uh, just moments before this plane ran into some type of trouble. Steve? You know, living here in Florida, we know that these thunderstorms can pop up so quickly, and that's exactly what happened last night. So when a thunderstorm developed so quickly, and there was one left on radar, and it was the one right over NAS Jackson, as it does develop so quickly, you have warm air rising so fast. And as it is rising, it is cooling down, it is condensing, and as it cools down and condenses, it becomes heavy. But because you have that warm air continuing to rise, it upholds all of that colder, heavy air and prevents it from sinking. So this just kind of builds up and stores up all of this heavy, dense, cold air until eventually it comes crashing down to the surface. That's what we call a microburst, which could potentially produce wind gusts upwards of 90 to 100 miles an hour. Think of a tornado just without the rotation. I don't think that was the situation because of the, the weather observations we've been getting from NAS Jacks last night when the thunderstorm had happened. The other factor that could have been it if it was wind was a crosswind where at the surface you have wind going across the runway perpendicular that could have affected the plane. But again, I don't think with the with the observations we're getting from last night that wind was the issue. It may have been just been the wet the the wet runway or potentially lowered visibility. Guys. Thank you very much. Talking about Steve, this nasty weather. Um, the questions come up from a lot of you uh, on social media. Should that plane have even been flying or trying mm -hmm. to land? And that's not a question we can really, we can't judge that, but it's definitely something that's on people's A minds. lot of people asking that on our social media platform. So let's go in and check in now with First Coast News' Shelby Danielson, who's been looking more into this aspect of the story. Shelby? About this flight, and actually, it was supposed to land at NES Jacks much sooner before this storm even hit. Now, what we're told is that this flight actually takes off every Friday and every other Tuesday. It leaves at 9 a.m. from NES Jacks to uh, Gitmo, which is what happened yesterday morning. Actually, it left at 9 a.m., but 15 minutes into that flight, there was an issue with the AC, so it had to turn around. Once they finally repaired that issue, it was time for a change in command. It was also what's hours, and that's when they can't really fly during that period of time. So there were a few hours of delay. So they ended up taking off at 3:30, several hours after it was planned, and that means you know they were originally supposed to come back to NHX at 4 p.m. and have another flight take off at 5 p.m. So none of that happened, as we know. So instead, they came back at about 9 p.m. as we know and they hit that storm and we know that the rain caused even more delay. And again, I want to go back to what we were talking about earlier about the pets on board. Uh, there are several people on scene who tell us that two cats and one dog were on board and there's a passenger who tells us that that dog was a five year old boxer and one of the cats was the dog's family member and we're told that they're still in the cargo area, the underbelly of the plane. So it's important to know staff says they cannot definitively confirm the condition of those three animals until they can get to them. Because of safety reasons, they just have not been able to reach them just yet. But once we know for sure how those pets are doing in the underbelly, we're going to let you know. Back to you guys. All right, thanks so much. And we don't want to keep going on and on about the pets if that's frustrating you. But 
99% of our comments, we're told on social media, or at least a high percentage, are about those pets because people love their people animals so much. Mm -hmm. And you know, we know that the inside the cabin there was no water when this happened, but under in the underbelly of the plane, we can't know whether those animals were able to stay dry or if they weren't. Let's hope that they were. Let's hope that they're okay yeah. and uh, time will tell. We'll see as soon as uh, the rescuers yeah. get to those animals. You know, we're hearing uh, this morning for the first time from the pilot inside the com uh, cockpit uh, in a conversation with air traffic controller right before this plane skidded off the runway and also from one of the passengers who was on board this plane. Let's take a listen. 35A, Roger. We're painting some weather over Navy Jacks. How does uh, 10 degrees left look for me? We climbed onto the wing. We couldn't tell where we were, whether it was a river or an ocean. And so you can only imagine what it was like for passengers there. Uh, some passengers described hitting a bump when the plane landed on the runway and then skidded out. But it's, you know, the middle of the night, 10, almost 10 o'clock, pitch dark outside. And, you know, for passengers who maybe were in the aisle seat, didn't look out the window, not knowing where you are. And we know that uh, it was a tremendous effort by uh, Jacksonville Fire Rescue, by the fire department there on the base at NAS Jackson, all the other first responders, dozens and dozens of them who rushed to the scene, uh, rushed to get the passengers, some who were standing on the wings of the plane off that plane to safety and what helped them uh, get there so quickly is that this plane stopped came to a rest in shallow water of the St. Johns River. And to your point, the crews got there quickly. The commanding officer at NAS Jax, Captain Mike Connor, praising mm -hmm. JFRD and his own firefighters and their own rescue teams. Within 15 minutes they were there. But if you're a if you're a passenger standing in the pitch dark right. on the plane wing or you're still inside going, what happened? Oh my gosh, where are we? 15 minutes would seem so like, like an eternity, an eternity yeah. even though you're standing there alive, but that must be extremely tough. So we hope those folks are able to kind of get the shakes out and yeah. enjoy their family just a little bit now. But let's go out to Lou. We're already seeing his shot off of his boat. Uh, tell us exactly where in the river you are. What's on the other side? We see NAS there. Mm -hmm. And what's on the other side, Lou? Yep. Yeah, we're directly across essentially from, you know, the Bowles School, uh, you know, uh, Southern Mandarin area there, uh, Goodby's Lake and, and Creek there, uh, you know, that would be the direct other side uh, from where we are. And, and, and people are already, uh, you can tell people are putting in their, uh, putting their boats in the water, they're coming out and they're spectating. And you've got a lot of authorities out, as you can imagine, patrolling as well. Um, certainly a, a beautiful day to be out on the river and we're doing it ourselves you know do as we say not as we do sometimes but today I've sort of far enough back the, they have been patrolling and in fact Florida Fish and Wildlife and Coast Guard have only uh, really had to chase off one specific individual who got a little too close a little too fast um, but the, the real story and, and the real reason we're out here and, and trying to get you this perspective from your living room that you can see now that daylight is up we've saw all the pictures from night time, uh, but to get a look at it, uh, a, a 737 in a river is unbelievable. Let's drive home the point, if you didn't hear make it just a moment ago, that all the fuel has been contained. Uh, that's another reason that we're out here as well. We want, kinda wanted to see if you could smell, sense, or even see that oil slick or that fuel slick. No, you can't, and, and isn't that another wonderful thing uh, to have come out of this near tragedy off the end of the uh, runway their runway number 10 at NES Jacks. Now I've been watching off from a distance. The, the zoom is doing really incredible work from this camera. Obviously we can uh, zoom in and get a much better look. I, with my naked eye, as we have uh, been staying back about a half mile to a mile this whole time um, due to patrols, I haven't seen too much activity of, or anyone going inside that plane. I've seen a lot of people on the shore. We've seen emergency vehicles coming and going, lights flashing. But as far as anyone actually getting into the aircraft, I haven't seen that yet, and um, that's not to say it hasn't happened, because certainly I haven't had my eyes peeled to it every waking second, but uh, for those who are uh, interested and have been continuing to post on social media about the animals that are potentially on board, I haven't seen uh, anything happen with that just yet. Of course, we will uh, continue to watch. Uh, for those who are getting out on the river today, what they're doing, they're, they're keeping you back a good half mile. And it's best to just stay in the center of the river at this point. I, I, I do also want to note from that soundbite that we heard from the passenger, the St. John's River. I mean, for those who would be flying in to NAS Jacks with no familiarity of Jacksonville or the St. John's River, I could easily see at a dark night 
a stormy night. Um, the St. John's River is so wide at this point, some three miles wide, that it, it could almost be perceived if you had no idea where you were as a, a really big lake. And you know how big the waves can get on this. It white caps here on the river just as much as it would on the ocean, quite frankly. So I could see where that, that woman would be coming from, thinking, I have no idea where we are in that blackness. You cannot see across the river at that time of night, especially with that low visibility. So I uh, certainly feel for that, that fear. But as we see right now, right against the shoreline there. In fact, landing gear wedged into the ground, so it's it's not even floating around. It's, it's pretty well stuck in that position until the NTSB clears it and we'll be able to uh, remove it from the river. Guys, that's the picture uh, that really tells that story from here on the water's level. For now, we're back inside to you. You know, I've been looking at this image for several hours now and it is still just jarring to see this huge plane in the St. John's River. And Lou, if you can still hear me, have you gotten any word on how um, they're going to try and remove the plane from the St. John's River? I know NTSB is going to need to get on scene, do their investigation, but when it's time for that plane to come out of the water, how are they going to do that? Yeah, so I've seen this done before. I, I, I haven't made any calls on that and haven't heard uh, anything exactly how that's going to work, but I've seen a plane actually removed uh, before and it, it involves a lot of times in a situation where it's it's in the center of the body of water, they've got to bring in barges. Um, so you'll have tugs in that'll probably bring in barges that have cranes on top that will actually uh, use different types of hoists to bring it up. And then that will have to be put on a riverbound barge more than likely, if not, uh, it is close enough to shore to where they could bring it uh, and drag it back on. But th th there's so much sensitive uh, investigative uh, detail here that you don't want to damage anything. Sure. So of course, the they're going to go through as much as they can while it's still in the water, take things apart piece by piece while it's still in the water so as to not you know, wreck any evidence. Uh, so it's a delicate procedure to say the least, but yeah, they're going to, ha we haven't seen the crane. They will require some really heavy duty machinery to more or less try to get it out in one piece. Yeah, a big undertaking they have in store for them there. We know the NTSB is headed to the scene. Uh, we're expecting to get some type of update, some type of briefing later on this afternoon. They haven't yet though announced what time they're going to be updating us.